Happy New Year's Tea Wolves. It's January 3rd, 2023. I'm Lexi. And I'm Ambria. And the Wolf View begins now. White no baby! This Friday and Saturday are the theater for honors performance of The Little Mermaid. Here's some more information. Hey, I'm Lexington One Meteorologist Evan Dees. Today we're going to be taking a look at Little Mermaid, how they prepare, and what the play is about. So let's take a look at what some of the actors in Little Mermaid have to say. So I think the first way to prepare is always to ask questions. If you're wondering about anything, that's the best way to prepare. That way you're not left confused. In terms of lines, my favorite thing to do is to make a Quizlet set and memorize all my cues and memorize my lines based on that and just go through them a bunch. And songs, I work one-on-one -on -one with Ms. Felder if I have any other questions, but I try to just read the sheet music and figure out what I can. I run my songs a lot. I run my lines or lack there of lines considering that I can't talk during the show. Um, and I like to hang out with my castmates. I think it really helps us bond. Hi, I'm Toby. I play Prince Eric in The Little Mermaid. As well as being Prince Eric, I do a lot of other things for the show. So I write down and sketch out some set designs and lighting designs for our tech crew so they have stuff to work on throughout our rehearsal process. Um, I also work on um, choreography. So reviewing vocals and choreography and watching those videos helps me prepare for that part of the show and then making a Quizlet and writing down my lines. Little Mermaid is about, obviously, a mermaid who wishes that she could be human, falls in love with a human when she sees him on a ship, and just desperately wants to be able to go up there, so she trades her voice to a sea witch and only has three days to kiss him, otherwise she's going to lose her legs. But it's a happy little love story. They fall in love, get married, all that fun stuff. It's about, like, this mermaid that traded her, um, like, tail for legs and her voice. She can't use her voice anymore um, so that she can be with this guy that she loves on the the Little Mermaid, it, the musical follows the Disney movie, The Little Mermaid. It follows Ariel, this young mermaid who wants, sees a prince and wants to be with him. And he, she makes a deal with her aunt, uh, Ursula, a sea witch, to trade her voice for legs uh, to go up to see Prince Eric. And she has to get him to kiss her without her voice. And if she doesn't do it in three days, she becomes a mermaid again and doesn't get to be with Prince Eric. I honestly think the show is for everyone. Little Mermaid is a classic Disney movie. Everyone has probably at least heard it, if not seen it, at least once. I think there's something for everyone, whether it be little kids who are gonna see a princess for the first time, or adults who wanna be able to hear the music and see the choreography and the lighting and things like that. I think everyone. I think, um, obviously, the obvious answer is like little girls, but I think um, adults can have a like big nostalgic connection to it. Um, if you watched Disney movies as a kid, if you like theater, if you like fun costumes and things, this show has a lot of animals and cool things like that. So I really think it's for every type of person. So it is January 6th and 7th, that's a Friday and Saturday. We have an evening show and a matinee. It's $5 for students, $10 for adults. Oh so yeah, it's here at White Knoll High School. And you know this is going to be in the brand new Performing Arts Center right here at White Knoll High School. And I hope you're going to be there to watch this. They spend a lot of time preparing for this. And do make sure you attend the Little Mermaid play. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. And now it's time for the sports update with Cal and Ethan. Hey T-Wolves, I'm Cal. And I'm Ethan. And here's what's going on in White No Sports. <laughs> The 2023 White Knoll Track and Field team is beginning practice today at the track. If you join the team, you will have the opportunity to pick from 18 different events, including pole vault, javelin throw, distance runs, sprints, jumps, and many more. We have an event for everyone. See Coach Clark in room 706 or, e or email him at gclark at lexington1.net 
if you have any questions. And as with all sports, Planet HS paperwork must be completed before you are able to participate. Men's Golf will be holding open season practice starting today at Cherwood Golf Club. Individuals interested will need a physical and need to contact Coach Burns at rburns at lexington1.net. On the schedule for this week, tonight, the varsity basketball teams are home against Aiken at 6 and 7.30. Tomorrow, the wrestling team competes against River Bluff at 5 o'clock, and the JV basketball teams are at Bro Brooklyn Casey. On Thursday, the JV basketball teams are at home against Blythewood. <laughs> On Friday, the varsity basketball teams travel to Blythewood, and the wrestling team will compete in the Blue Devil Classic at Dreher High School. That's it for this week. Now back to the anchors. Bye. And now, another visit from our old friend, Jimmy Buckets. All right, all right. I know that you haven't listened to me in the past because I haven't had anything concrete, but I really think I got something for you this time, Detective. I want you to take a look. All right, I got some pictures for you today, all right? I want you to look through. You see this one at the top? That's Lucas Lamastro and Jimmy Buckets, the last day that Lucas was seen. And then the one underneath is two days later. You see those shorts? Those are Lucas's that he's wearing. And then if you look over here, that one is a picture of the trash can at the back of the school with a broken bat, all right? And I took that down to the lab, and guess whose fingerprints are on that? Jimmy Buckets. I don't think it's a coincidence that Jimmy Buckets was the last person to be seen with Lucas Lamastro the day he went missing. And I know you're probably thinking, all right, so you got pictures, but what does this mean? Well, let me give you the motive. We all saw that Jimmy Bucket's documentary that went up the other week. And we all saw Lucas Lamastro dirty talking the root beers. And we know that Jimmy gets very defensive about those root beers. And then I was wondering, why does he care so much? So I started to do a little bit of digging. Now, at first I thought, it's just a businessman trying to keep a good image on his product. But when I took it to the lab to get its components analyzed, I couldn't believe what was in it. It was filled to the brim with juice. juice. You know what that means, right, Detective? Of course you do. It gets him going back over and over and over again until it does him in. But you know what it reminded me of, Detective? My sister's autopsy report. You see, a few years ago, she bit the bullet. And I didn't think there was any foul play. I thought it was just a freak accident. But now, I think that this root beer put my sister to sleep with the fishes. Now, I know that's not 100% concrete, but I think we've got enough here to start a case against Jimmy Buckets. So what do you say, Detective? Looks like we've got ourselves a case. All right. All right. And that's the Wolfie for this week. Have a great day, and go, go T-Wolves.